All right, we're at my fish tank today, starting off and uh, feeding the fish. They're high protein spirulina fish food, blah, blah, blah. And they like it. The water is super dark because I just dosed up with uh, liquid kelp concentrate <clears throat> and it stains the water. So everything's going about pretty much the same in here. These are the filters and the duckweed. And there is a lot of sediment at the bottom. I don't know if you can see. But everything seems to be doing okay so far. And uh, I have a plan for that sediment. Mostly that sediment came from my recent sump tank expansion where I was using a sump pump to add water back to a sump tank as it was leaking into the hole that I dug. It doesn't matter. Anyway, I have a lot of dirt in the system now. <laughs> so, these are the squash. And getting in there, we've got many little blossoms that are developing into veggies or into fruit, I guess you could say. pumpkin plant it's right there and uh, boom. pumpkin pumpkin and it's coming across all the way across here and I'm pulling off fresh strawberries uh, ripe strawberries I guess like every day a few of them every day anyway also in this bed are white Carolina strawberries also known as pine berries I don't know if they are or they're just similar enough or what but anyway I got them so they came and they looked nearly dead but they sprouted right away very vigorous growth I thought uh, and then there's another one but you can see there's my finger <laughs> so not huge leaves but pretty good looking growth in my opinion this is the musk melon here, and that's a piece of kale. And uh, <laughs> there's the pumpkin back in here. I think this is a pepper plant. I think it's habanero. And it just has been shaded out totally by these squash and pumpkin plants. And of course, here is, in all her glory, the thornless blackberry, who's putting off lots and lots of blossoms and it's going to turn into berries but not yet so there's been some additions to this grow bed as well I forget what that is <laughs> which I feel like a nimrod now. Greek oregano. And when I got it, it was all leggy like that. So I think it's too late. It's basically gonna die, but maybe the roots will survive and then grow back. These seed pods are uh, basically done. And I roll them up. And there's the seeds. And I've just been uh, kind of sprinkling them in here. Maybe they sprout, maybe not. This is a thorny blackberry from a camping trip I went on. I brought it back. I thought it would be fun. Maybe it'll make it, maybe not. The tip is dead. <laughs> totally dead. Next to it is a purple dragon fruit plant which I don't know how it's gonna do but we'll see that is a cucumber that is a salmon berry plant that I just planted 
uh, cucumber, cucumber, uh, snapdragon, and then of course, a raspberry cane, which must be eight to nine feet tall by now. Slugs are abundant in this bed. And they are eating, that's slug damage. They are eating my peas. I also have, that is an elderberry plant. Next to a kale. Lots of peas trying to grow up on these strings. This is a white dragon fruit plant. Looks a little different. Here's a red currant plant or bush. And this is basil, which appears to be growing slightly faster than it's being eaten, but not by much. Oh, it smells awesome. <laughs> mm. Butternut squash, which, same deal. Looks like it's sacrificing one leaf and keeping all the rest. And uh, salmon berry there. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. tomato plant has gotten massive and uh, lots and lots of flowers so hopefully that turns into lots and lots of tomatoes because I like tomatoes this is just overabundance broccoli which is not growing really hasn't grown since I planted it. This is a cucumber plant with cukes and it's spreading out this way. A little cucumber. A poblano pepper plant. Jalapeno pepper plant. Kale, which has those little guys underneath, I can't be good. And then here's the bell pepper plant. Basically half the growth, and I planted this one a few weeks before that one at the same size. And here is the cherry tomato plant, which I've also got tied back on this side, a few of those strings there. I'll get to these sump tanks here in a second. I gotta finish my rounds. So I had something planted there, I can't remember, it was like a melon or something, and uh, it shriveled and died almost immediately. Then I've got a bunch of Valencia onion here growing, and also some strawberry plants growing here in front. My thornless loganberry. And then this is a mulberry start. So that'll go into its own barrel here eventually, but for now it's in the bathtub. So that's more cucumbers. Those ones don't seem to have very happy leaves. Uh, again, there's a pepper, some kind of deficiency. I think it's potassium. I've been having issues with my with my water. Oh, it's kind of rubbing off. I wonder if that's a disease. I've been having issues with my water. I 
lost some, then I refilled, and I lost some, I refilled, and I added nutrients, and basically everything's a mess as far as the nutrition profile goes. My orange tree, doing okay, kind of bug eating. And I've also got some Solomon seal in here, which is not super happy. That one seems to be doing okay. A little bit better. Yeah, that's medicinal use. I think you can eat the berries or something, I'm not sure. Or you can't. There's controversy. Lots of berries. So this is my nutrient reclamation tub. And I've been doing some research online. Uh, no one really has, that I can tell, has started trying to do this liquid composting with the plant matter, but um, I think I've been having good results, uh, or I don't know yet, but I got a phosphate test and a fresh water API master test kit, so I'll be testing for nitrates, nitrites, and ammonia, and phosphate trying to see if nutrients are being released um, or if the nitrate nitrogen that should be in there isn't and then that indicates that it's uh, actually bioavailable it's complicated but anyway right now what I do is I let this sit I've let this sit for a couple of days anaerobically and it's been uh, breaking down let's say I had this running aerobically so the air was bubbling and uh, it wasn't breaking down very fast, if at all. So then I started, uh, then I turned off the air. And the stiff leaves kind of turned into this gucky mess. And you can see the darker portions where it's starting to break down. So I think I'm doing something here. I'm not sure if it's right. But anyway, so I think I'll let it... Uh, sit here like this for a while and then turn the air back on uh, after a day or so and uh, see how it reacts I guess and, and let it sit and currently right now I'm draining it into the sump tank through that valve and pipe right there uh, and I just hold a little fishnet in front of the discharge of that pipe to catch any uh, greens that come through on the other side of this pipe on the inside it's just open so it catches whatever's in front of it uh, when I turn the valve so I have to have that tank pretty murky water some of this is um, from the seaweed concentrate I put in and some of it is from the soil I wash off the roots of the potted plants in the sump tank and let the soil drop down into the bottom. I've got some critters in here that like to go through it and um, anyway it looks like it stained the water a little bit. So my sump tanks are pretty much uh, in and done and complete and the drainages have been pretty much in and done and complete and let me just kind of explain what they are now. There's three sump tanks that are all connected uh, under, via underground pipe hydraulically. So in theory the water levels in all three should be the same all the time. And that's not really the case but it's close enough that it doesn't make a difference. Uh, I've got a inch and a quarter pipe down below that, hook, that connects all the tanks. And tubs and then I've got above that um, an inch and a half line and you can see here the inch and a half is that has a white uh, adapter screwed into it and then beneath that there that's the entrance to the inch and a quarter uh, pipe so I've got two sets of pipes feeding this tub and here's the pump here taking the water and pushing it up to the fish tanks or fish tank <laughs> grow bed drainage 
my bathtub drains here into uh, into that tub. I also have the my extra flow valve here draining into this tub and this takes extra flow from the discharge of this bed goes down some of it goes to those other two beds over there some of it comes back here so that's how I can help control the flow of water through the system and then this here is the drainage from the secondary grow beds over there not the blue barrel but behind it comes here and I believe oh actually I think that this one also drains the blue barrel as well yeah this is the blue barrel and the two secondary grow beds and this is the bathtub only all right well that's the system and uh, it's not perfect but it's doing okay and uh, I'm starting to gravitate towards plants that I don't have to throw away and then replant I'd rather just plant it once and then keep harvesting it so we'll see how it turns out